Hey everyone, Lauren here. Going to have some fun with the printables. So just pulling out the ones that have got the, the Project Live cards and... Oh, sorry. For some reason I thought it was on a loop or something. Um, so then, yeah, I'm just using my punches. So I've got a two inch and a one and a half inch circle punch. And I'm just pulling out a few of the shapes just a few of the shapes, few of the cards so that I can get some different patterns. Last month I converted the PDF um, of the printable. Sorry, my brain is trying to do 20 things at once about apparently. So sorry, last month I used a PDF converter and changed them into PNG so that I could use the, P the Project Life cards as full page printables. Uh, I didn't do that this month and if I did then this would have been the perfect way to use some of those papers but it's okay because I got them used in the format they are designed in by Deb. So you can see here I'm just using a range of colors some pinks, the orange, the blue and the yellow um, which is pretty much the kit and the colors of the collection that is used. So I am using the punches because Steph gave all of us on the design team a challenge to use tools that we don't use as often as we should have or, you know, it's those tools that you think, oh yeah, I'm going to use them so much, that's why I should buy them and then it just doesn't happen that way at all. So I pulled out 12 by 12 paper and I am just grabbing some more pink, this is a tag actually. Because I realized I didn't have any pink in what I created. So pretty easy to just use the cards in multiple different ways. I will still use them as in some pocket page. Some Project Life. That's one of my videos for the month. So you can check that out if you're into that more than the layouts. Or aren't so comfortable at cutting up your cards to use in a different way. So I pull out this photo of my son and I start using those off cuts that I punched the circles out of. It just gives it that little edge to border the paper with without being too overwhelming. You do have to be a little bit, um, you know, you have to be, it's a bit tricky, but it's achievable to be able to make it um, sit to the side like that where you can see the color and hide where the shapes have been punched so if I don't keep those pieces if I'm putting a kit away or it's multiple days but if I knew that I was going to back some photos it would be good to keep the same patterns so that's why I've kept it today otherwise there's just too much stuff anyway this is what I'm going to do with the punch shapes so I'm just literally, I don't show you very well now, but I will slow it, the video down and you'll be able to see it better. So I'm just cutting into the circle, just about roughly to the middle. And then I am putting a bit of double sided tape and then I overlap those edges and it makes like a cone, a cone shape, sorry. So that way it gives some, quite a bit dimension actually. It's not one of those layouts that are, uh, totally flat at all and I was thinking oh I did see someone had shared a creation using circles like this in a in a different way and I, as I was putting them together like this and I had the leaves sitting to the side I thought oh maybe they could be like flowers so I am toying with the idea that's why I've put that leaf there um, but I'm just yeah I'm just overlapping it and sticking them together with a double sided tape and then I'm just pushing the bottom the point I guess down onto the, the paper so that there's a flat bottom for it to glue to the page otherwise I had no idea how they're going to connect and stay on the layout so you see here I'm just gonna make another one before we skip through and all of them are done cut through little tiny bit of tape and then overlapping them the more you overlap them the more um, taller they get so just have a little play with all that goodness so here we go 
I'm going to skip through and we are now committing to those paper layers behind my photo and just getting it. So I just basically put a whole pile of tape on the back so that it can stick in some way because it's all going to be glued down in the end. It doesn't need, like, I don't want to fiddle with putting sticky tape on those tiny little pieces. That would be ridiculous. And just straighten them up and cutting off some of the white edges that I didn't do too well when I was punching them because I knew as long as I could get closer to the pattern to punch, then that was fine. I didn't need a straight edge for that job. So you can see here, just having a little play with going which side they're going to go on of the photo. Then this one has a little bit extra so I can cut it down and use that other side in a different way. So it's always good to use what you've got, but don't be like, I'm trying not to keep every little thing like that just for the sake of it for weeks and weeks. If I, if I put those kind of pieces away in my stash, I reckon they would never be used again. So use them now or get rid of them if they're more like those scrappy scrap pieces. If they are you know, got some meat to them and got some chunk and thickness to them, then definitely they can, I put them into my stash of um, scraps, but things like this, not so much. So you can see here, I'm liking how the photo is going to sit there. I did cut the photo down to three by three, and then I just give in some of those pattern paper layers to bulk it out and make it take up a bit more of the layout. I am fully cutting some of the pocket page cards now and then cutting them in half so it looks like I've got a big pattern piece, a big pattern paper piece so that goes the length an extra of the photo and then I'm going to cut this pink one down so that I can have some from the top and the bottom as well sorry this one they were very similar or well, maybe it's just because we were flying through so quickly just simple as double-sided tape if I had full pattern paper layers you often see me use the tiny attacher but because there's nothing It'd be so hard to make sure that I got all piece, all the pieces of the pattern paper stapled in without the photo. That's just impossible to use the tiny attacher in this situation. So I've pulled out this cardstock. I swapped them over because this one is gessoed. And if you know me, that is surprising that I have a gessoed piece of paper in front of me. But if you watched my first video for the month, you would see that I challenged myself to use gelatos so I did paint gesso onto two backgrounds because I knew that the gesso is going to help the gelatos work much better so you can see I just used my spray bottle and sprayed some water straight onto the page and I'm just drawing with some gelato straight on and using my finger to smush it out basically wanting it to look like a packaging technique without getting some plastic out and having the uncertainty I can use my finger quite easily especially because the paper is gessoed so I put the blue on straight away and learn from me and dry between your colors it didn't mix too much but I had to be a little bit mindful about it and its movement so when I like to dry it with a heat gun I do like to move my paper around and if there's two colors that are wet they do end up smushing together and that can be very annoying or to deal with to, to hinder that happening or for it to happen and then have some weird ass color on your paper. So just using similar colors to the pattern papers in the Project Live cards. Got some the pink which is actually more purpley pink that first one and then some blue and some orange and some yellow and then I do pull in a proper pink so I'm just cutting out the drying time in between but I'm keeping the mixing with my finger and spreading it out just so you can see how I make it look random without it being random as such if that makes sense so just if you need more color just add more gelato the good thing about having a, a supply like this for a long time means that I am now more willing to use it up and not be so 
cautious with it because I just didn't spend money on it I guess or it's just a trend and I you know didn't know if I was gonna I'm waiting for the right thing to use it on I think now that it's been in my stash for a couple of years I am like yep let's use it don't worry about the amount of crayon that you're using if it's what you need then it's what you need so add some of this pink which is a really lovely it's much brighter on the screen with editing than it was than it is in person now because I've got a gesso background the water pools on top which is part of helping to use the medium but because I'm not used to it I am getting a bit um, over that and the fact of the drying time with it but I make it you know it's worth it in the end because I really like how this layout turned out now I've just used a different blue this one is an art crayon and it's just a little bit darker than the first one so that there's a bit of contrast in those shades see how fun it is to make the water dance on your paper dance water dance <laughs> so get some color in a few different spots then I had to put it on so again just using my heat gun to dry it and then we're going to move on I put a bit of yellow down the bottom there because it had a little bit of a, a blank space so again water down first bit of the gelato and then I'm going to use my finger to spread it in and if I need more water I will just add some more water so that's really fun and as you know mixed media or maybe you don't but mixed media backgrounds always look like a lot and even though there's just one layer of goodness going on this one it's still a lot of colors and it and it sort of um, because I haven't blended in the colors it kind of stands out but I'm going to cover up enough of that to make it just pop out from the background and be a, a great point of interest rather than if there's n when nothing's on it and it's just the background of of mixed media it can be not as nice as you would probably think so definitely have a play with that so I'm now having a play with the the circles and I decide that they're not sticking out enough and I need to ink the edges so just close up again so that you can see just using my stays on ink and just using the side at an angle to the paper and just that way inking up the edges so that you can see the black line of the edge to make it pop rather than blend in with all the colors going on so you can see just going around and doing all the ones that I have made I do have a couple of extra shapes oh, excuse me big yawn that I have cut out but I haven't put together and I will use a couple of them later but not at the moment and not all of them so I decide to cut some of these beautiful foliage that we got in the full page of foliage and I have cut just some of these beautiful lovely pastel -y kind of matte colors and I haven't fully cut in between them because it's going to be too fiddly but also I just don't need it to happen but I've left a generous white border for it all to smooth and smooth out and make it look like it's meant to be that way so again with a bit of a different leaf so there's a few different sizes quite a few different colors that all match the kit so I'm thinking about a floral cluster to the left there and then one here to the right that's maybe a little bit more spread out so that it'd be a bit hard to say that it's a cluster but um, that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna pull out some more of these leaves and then I really just don't like the photo that and it just doesn't gel with the the design so I'm going to pull off some of the pattern paper and use a different photo. So I'm going to use a photo of my son, myself and my son a few years ago at Floriard. Well, probably more than just a few years ago. I think probably, well, he just turned 13. So a few, few years ago indeed. So now because it is all these little scrap pieces it was a little bit tricky to get it away from the photo but I got enough away that I can use some of the layers 
and I'm just going to use them to have the top and the bottom added um, layering rather than all the way, way around it. So just tidying up what's going on and then I'm just going to stick it up there and down there and have a little bit of fun with the colours and the patterns that are in these pocket page cards that I've already used but then I am reusing in a different way um, because of my preference at the moment in the time. So again just using a whole pile of double sided tape seeing if I really can get any of those pattern papers extra off the background but that's not going to happen so instead I reach for another pocket page card this one's got some of the grid and then a, a bit of a stripe of the orange so I'm going to cut that in half so again to give the optical illusion that I've got a larger piece of pattern paper that runs from the top to the bottom and that's going to be that it doesn't have to be too technical with the photo layers but I'm putting them all to the right and that's sort of going to be my side of the um, the layout of what's going on in terms of the big cluster that I'm going to make so just finishing touches here just making sure the pieces of pattern paper are straight and then I'm going to glue them down and start working on gluing down these new flowers that I've made so just with some wet glue so that they can stick fairly easily and evenly but because I've pushed down those little pyramids cones it means that they are able to stand up in without being squished or falling down or not being out of work I wish uh, if I can find the original photo that sort of had a pretty because I didn't take a screenshot and I only quickly had a look and you know the old age you know craziness of oh I'll remember I don't need to write it down is a hundred percent false but um, I didn't take a screenshot so I can't go back and check it but I thought I'm like pretty sure they had these little punched out shapes that they'd overlap to make these pyramids but they didn't use them as flowers and yeah it was just nice and I thought it would be nice inspiration for today's layout and then I took those just the basic shape and then changed it into flowers and and clustering and all goodness going on in the background with the mixed media aka gelatos so I'm working out what my title is going to be I thought before I stick down these flowers that I should put on the title to make it um, fit rather than doing it afterwards and having limited choices so I've got these pink fresh thickers which are almost gone which is yay go me but also they are so adorable the, the font the color um, and the fact that they're like little puffy ones are is amazing they do need a bit of glue but which you know most scrapping supplies really do anyway so it's not no biggie bit of wet glue I'm going to stick on the word memories just because and I'm going to add some journaling underneath it and then going to come and actually glue down these flowers some of them I've layered inside each other with one of the big ones on the outside and a little one on the inside just quite simple and there we go cluster of three to the left of the word and got some foliage to support the fact that they are flowers and to give people a bit of knowledge so I'm gonna work on the cluster here on the right and it's going to end up much bigger than it starts so on goes and the good thing about making the pyramids all different um, sizes and heights because of the, um, the way you stuck them down with the double-sided tape means that they can sort of layer underneath each other and over top of each other without too much hassle in terms of foam tape so on they go I'm just giving a little second to hold them down to make sure that they are stuck just because the surface area is quite small on the flowers adding some foliage I'm just gluing down the bottom that is going to be tucked under 
so that way if I wanted to I could prop up the leaves and make them more 3D and then on this sticker sheet there is some leaves and some flowers that I'm just going to pop in to add some interest and um, different dimension and different embellishments to the kit but uh, you can see that just the flowers being made like that and decorated the mixed media background that it wouldn't be too much of a need to get everyone to chip in. So I've gone and grabbed my stash of enamel dots and I'm going to use these black glitter enamel dots and just using the medium size in all the little flowers which make again make them pop off the page along with the inked edges that I had originally done so God, I've committed to that committed to the title and the mixed media background I'm just going to add some journaling underneath the title I do go back in and add a little bit more before calling it a day with the journaling course a doodly border because you can't go wrong with a doodly border and it is something that sort of is needed from time to time it's holding it up to see what my thoughts are in terms of the package so just finishing off some of the journaling and I'm not going to do too much more I do decide that I'm going to need one more flower on the top cluster here sort of to blend in that puffy flower up the top so I do just go oh yep no worries I can just glue it down stick to tape the sides together and then glue it down on the paper and realize that I need to ink the edges and I need to get enamel dots so um, if you are one of those people who likes to do everything and have it all planned out then maybe have it layering there so that you know where the flowers are going to stick but I'm someone that likes to just go with the flow and make it happen as it's coming together anyway guys thanks for joining me today hopefully you've felt inspired to use some of these printable exclusive and definitely to use up your kit have a great day guys enjoy the close-ups bye